So what I did is I put up a couple of rules for you guys when you're doing AC series circuits. If you follow these rules, then you will not have any problem. Okay. Rule number one is you want to ensure that your voltage is in phaser form. If not, put it in phaser form. So if I give it to you in sinusoidal, you got to convert it to phaser because it must be in phaser form in order to solve the circuit. The next thing you want to do is find X of C and X of L. Okay. Just make sure you look at your capacitor and inductors because on some of your some of them sometimes I'm going to give you a capacitor and I'm going to tell you the value is 60 ohms well if I tell you the value is 60 ohms I'm already giving you X of C okay so if I put it in ohms I'm giving you the X of C value I'm giving you the capacitive reactance same thing with the inductors if I put them in ohms I'm already giving you the reactance all you got to do is put the angles on them and go if they're in farads for capacitors or henry's for the inductors then you have to find x of c and x of l okay and how do we find them x of c is equal to one over two pi fc x of l is equal to two pi fl those are our formulas to find them once we get them, then we want to ensure everything has an angle. Make sure your voltage has an angle. Make sure your capacitor, your inductors have an angle, which we know the angle on capacitors is always what? Negative 90 degrees. The angle on inductors is always what? A positive 90 degrees. And the angle on resistors is always what? Zero. So we're going to put all our angles on this. Then we're gonna find Z total. How do we find Z total in the series circuit? We add them up, just like we did in DC, okay? And then we're gonna find I total. How do we find I total? We're gonna use Ohm's law, which is E over I Z. So we're gonna take our voltage, we're gonna divide it by our Z total and we're going to find our I total. Then we're going to find all the voltage drops for each component. It is a series circuit, so you can do it one of two ways. You can use Ohm's law, or you can use the voltage divider rule, whichever way you want. I like the voltage divider rule, so that's usually what I use. But you can use I times Z if you want. Okay? It's strictly up to you what you use. I'm not going to mandate that you use one or the other. But whichever one you like, you can use. Just remember, when we get the parallel circuits, though, you cannot use the voltage divider rule because just like in DC, in AC, parallel circuits, the voltage is constant. Okay? So let's try a circuit. And we'll kind of walk through this one because all we did on uh, Monday was we put up a circuit and all we did was find Z total. So we're actually going to walk through and do the whole thing. We're going to find Z total and then I total and all our voltage drops. So we have a circuit that looks like this. And remember, this is my schematic symbol for my AC power source. If it was a DC, it would just be a battery. So that's the circuit I got. So I'm going to follow my steps. Step one, I'm going to look at my voltage and make sure it's in phaser form. So the voltage I gave you, did I give you phaser form or sinusoidal form? 
listen, listen. You guys, you guys should know this. We went over this the other day. That voltage right here is that phaser or sinusoidal? You have to look back at your notes. Look back at your notes. That is phaser form? That is phaser form. So I'm already good. I'm in phaser. I don't have to do nothing with my voltage. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find X of C and X of L if I need to. Well, I got to look at my inductor. Is it in ohms? No. So I have to find X of L. Look at my capacitor. Is that in ohms? No. So I have to find X of C. So X of L is equal to 2 pi fl oh, i guess it would help if i gave you a frequency because i must give you a frequency when it's in phase or form mm -hmm. so that's going to equal two pi times one k hertz times one henry and when i put that in my calculator i should get 6.283 K ohms at an angle of 90 degrees because it's an inductor, so it's always going to be 90 degrees. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to ever so gently line out my one Henry, and I'm going to write 6.283 K ohms at an angle of 90 degrees. So that way I know that that's my inductive reactance. Then I'm going to find X of C. Well, that's equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. That's 1 over 2 pi times 1 k hertz times 0.1 microfarad. And if I put all that and multiply and then hit shift reciprocal, I should get 1.592 K ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees because the capacitor is always at negative 90. So I'm going to gently line that out, put 1.592 K ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. So step three tells me ensure everything has an angle on it. Well, my voltage has an angle on it, but my resistor doesn't. Resistors are always at an angle of zero. So R1, L1, and C1. Okay. So my next step tells me to find Z total. Well, for Z total, I'm just going to add all of them up with the angles. Joey, do you have a Casio calculator? Yes. Okay, I need to tell you how to set up your Casio calculator. So, if you turn it on to get your screen at, I don't think I can get you guys to see it. It looks like that where you're ready to add or multiply or divide or whatever. Okay. Then you're going to hit shift menu. And you should get something that looks kind of like that with an input or a mode or something up there. Yeah, first thing is mode. Yep, you're going to scroll down to where it says angle and ensure it says degrees. If it doesn't, press F1 so it says degree. Okay. It says degree. Okay, go to the next one where it says complex mode. Okay. And it probably says real right now. <coughs> you're going to hit F3 so it says R angle theta. And then just go down to the display and make sure it still says normal engineering one or normal one slash e. Once it's once you get there, hit your execute button and you should be back to your screen to where you can start adding. Yeah, good. All right. Now when you add these up, you're gonna push 100 and then you're gonna hit your shift button and probably two buttons below there, you're gonna see a button that has an X a theta and a T on it, but if you look above it, you should see a little angle symbol. So you're going to hit that button and you should get, if I can get it to show you, that's light. Yeah, I got it. 
you should have a little angle thing in there and you're just gonna type zero because that's my angle then i'm gonna hit plus 6.283 exponent 3 shift my angle button again type in 90 plus 1.592 exponent 3 shift angle button don't use the minus key make sure you use the negative which should be right next to your exponent negative 90 and i'm going to hit equals and when you hit equals and you actually put it in proper format you should get 4.692 k ohms and if you notice we're doing three decimal places now at an angle of 88 point seven seven nine so did everybody get that on their calculator yeah when, when you punched it all in you'll yeah. actually get four six nine two point zero six five seven five at yeah. an angle of but then i just moved my decimal place made it four point six nine two k so yeah. the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find i total all we're gonna do is take our E total divided by our Z total, but if, if, before you do that, I'm going to show you guys how to save it. Once you get it to this spot where you've got your uh, Z total, before you do anything else, you should have a little arrow button like this right here. Yep. If you push that arrow button, it should give you, you can try and get where you can see it should give you an answer with an arrow after it yep then hit your alpha key and then zero there should be a z on the zero button hit zero so it'll say answer with an arrow z and then hit execute now you just stored your z total in the z button yep. which which is going to make it easier when you find i total so to find I told you, just punch 100, hit your shift angle, zero, and then hit divide by, and then hit alpha Z, and it'll put in Z, and then you'll get your I total, which when you get that, you should get 21.313 milliamps at an angle of negative 88.779. Okay. So everybody make sure you've got that. All right, so after it saves, you just started a whole new thing or? Yeah, after it saves, then now yeah. it's saved in that Z, you just put 100, ohm, or 100 at an angle of zero, because that's your voltage, and then okay. hit divide. And then okay, once yeah. you hit the divide, hit alpha Z. So it should say 100 angle zero divided by Z. And then just hit execute and you should get 21.313 milliamps at an angle of negative 88.779. So did everybody get that? No. Who said no? Me. If I got 100 then did the angle zero divided I'm having problems putting the actual Z in. Do I need to actually put it in or? You should, yeah, no, you have, well, you have to hit divide and then you have to hit alpha yeah. Z or alpha zero button. That's where your Z is. So then you should, once you once you do that, then you should see 100 at an angle zero divided by Z. Alpha lock Z. Okay, I got it. And then hit, go. and then hit equal and you should get 21.313 milliamps. Yep. at an angle of negative 88.779. Yep, good. Okay. Now, before you do anything else, hit that little arrow key again. So it says answer with an arrow and then hit alpha and find your I button, which mine is the close or the open parentheses and hit execute. And now you just saved your I total in the I button. That way, whichever one you want to use, whether you want to use the voltage divider rule or Ohm's law, you got Z total saved and you got I total saved. So you don't have to type all those numbers in again. Okay. So I'm going to erase this because I'm running out of space. Because now we're going to go back and we're going to find our voltage drops. 
Okay. Will you click the on button? Will that clear everything that you just saved? It, no, it'll save whatever you just saved under the I button. Your Z total will still be saved under the Z button until you save something else under the Z button. Oh, cool. So every time you do one of these, when you find Z total, if you hit the save alpha Z, it's going to put your new Z total in the Z button. That way you have it for the problem that you're doing. And you can save the current in the I button and all you got to do is keep putting, keep saving them in them buttons and it'll save the new value every time you save something new. But until you save something new, it's going to keep whatever you had in there in there. So now we're going to find VR1, VL1, and VC1. So I, like I said, I use the voltage divider rule. You can use Ohm's law and say 100 at an angle zero times I total, 6.283 K ohms at an angle 90 times I total, 1.9. 592k ohms at an angle negative 90 times I total and get your voltage drops. Or you can say 100 at an angle zero times 100 at an angle zero divided by Z total equals 100 at an angle zero times 6.283k at an angle 90 divided by Z total, 100 volts at an angle zero times 1.592k ohms at an angle of negative 90 divided by Z total and get your answers that way. I don't care which way you do it. You guys do them up. I'm going to write the answers up here, and you make sure you get the answers that I put up here on the board. So for our total, I got 2.13 volts at an angle of negative 88.779. For VL1, I got 133.9. 907 volts at an angle of 1.221 and for VC1 33.930 volts at an angle of negative 178.779 so those are the answers that I've got so you guys Go ahead and figure them all out, whichever way you like, and make sure you get the answers that I have on the board. So you can use, like I said, you can use Ohm's Law or the Voltage Divider. It doesn't matter. Good. Yeah, I got it. Everybody else going? Getting, getting these answers? Caitlin? Dante? Uh, hold on, give me a second. You guys getting these answers? Nope. I don't think I have an example of finding these answers. So, well, you have to look. 
back because you're going to find them the same way we did in DC. So you either got to use Ohm's law, which tells me I take my z, multiply it by my i, and i is constant, so it's going to be times i total to get the r1. My z times i total give me dl1. My z times i total give me dc1. Or I can use my voltage divider rule, which says e total times whichever component I'm trying to find divided by my z total to give me my voltage. I can use either one that I want. Same as we did in DC. The only difference so is here, everything has angles. You've got to make sure you put the angles in. Hmm. So you can't just say 6.283 K ohms times I told you. you got to say 6.83 K ohms at an angle of 9 times my height. Put all my angles in there. Probably hear me better now, too. So, how are we looking now? Now we're starting to get these answers. Mm. I think I'm just using myself. All right. So, this one I would either do 100 at an angle of zero times I total equals. Or if I did my voltage divider rule, I would do 100 at an angle of zero times 100 at an angle of zero divided by Z total, because this is my E total. This is R1. R1, and that's my I total. I do it either way I want, and you should have Z total and I total saved in your calculator. So here you would just hit 100 times alpha I, and then hit equals. Over there you would put 100 at an angle of zero times 100 at an angle of zero divided by alpha Z equals, and it should give you your answers. And you treat L and C the same way? Yes, you use your okay. X of L and your X of C because that's our ohms and that's what we want to use. We want to use our impedance for each of those. Uh, so treat L and C as if it was another R1? Treat, treat them just like you would your R1. You're going to use your ohms because we okay. know ohms times amps gives me volts. So that's what we want. We want volts. And in our voltage divider rule, we'd have uh, voltage times ohms divided by ohms, so my ohms will cancel and just leave me with volts. Okay. So are we starting to get them now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we did our DC series circuits, once we found all our voltage drops, what did we do to make sure we were right? Add them up. We add them up. To make sure they equal my source voltage. E total, that so our E total, because all our voltages add together should equal E total. Well, I've already got, I got 133 volts here, but I only have 100. That's not going to work out right, because I'm all, I've already exceeded. I've already put more voltage out than I'm putting in. So where did I goof up? Well, 
Well, I, I may not have. Why don't you add those up and see what you get? Just to add them up exactly the way they are in there, 2.13, one at an angle negative 88.779, plus 133.907 at an angle 1.221, plus 33.930 at an angle of negative 178.779, and see what you get when you punch it in your calculator that way. Because when I punched it in my calculator, I'm going to put up here what I got and you tell me if you got the same thing. Yeah, get out. Go. So that's what I've got, I got when I punched them in my calculator. I got 99.9997 volts at an angle of negative 6.905 exponent negative 5. I got the number right, but the angle is different. You didn't get negative 6.905 at an angle of I got or exponent five, negative 5? No, I got 5.03 exponent negative 4. Okay. So you got what? But the number I got. 5.03. 03. 7. 7 exponent negative 4, right? Yeah. Okay. So even if I got this, you got this value seven. here, right? Yep. That's still the same. So that's 100 pretty much, right? 99.99. Yeah. .99. So we know that's good. Well, this, if I move my decimal point, since it's negative 4, I got to move it left. 1, 2, three, four, put my decimal point there, and I got to put zeros in there. Isn't that pretty much zero? Yeah. And same with mine. I just move it five times, right? So even though they look wrong, they're actually right. The angles make a difference. That's why with these, you're not just going to be able to look at it and say, yep, those are right to add up to E total. You're actually going to have to add them up to check yourself because the angles make a difference. A lot of times you're going to get one that's really high and it's going to be more and you're going to get some that are, you know, really low. The angles make a difference. So that's why we got to add them up. All right. So let's try another one. We'll try to walk through it a little bit slower, maybe. Maybe I was going a little fast on that one. So I'll try to go a little bit slower. So for this one, and So this is what I got for this circuit. So remember, we're going to follow our steps. Step one tells me what? Make sure my voltage is in phasor form. So I look at this. What type of voltage did I give you? Yeah, form. Yes. What form did I give you? Sinusoidal or did I give you phasor? Yes. It's this possible. should yeah. give you... This should give it away. Sinusoidal. I gave you a sinusoidal. So how do I convert from sinusoidal to phasor? Well, this six in sinusoidal is what? Volts peak, right? Well, I know, phasor is in what? VRMS. How do I get from volts peak to VRMS? You got the square. Uh, Go ahead, say it. 
square root of two divide by the square root of divide two. Divide by the square root of two. So I got to take six and divide it by the square root of two. So if I do that, I sh should get 4.243 volts. Where do I get my angle? This is my angle of offset. So it's at an angle of 60. So now I have my phaser voltage. So now I can go ahead and solve the circuit. So step two tells me what? <coughs> Find X of C and X of L if I have to. So I'm gonna look at my inductor and my capacitor. Are they in ohms? No, they're not. So I have to find X of C and X of L. So X of L is equal to two pi FL, okay? Well, I don't have a frequency, but what did I tell you guys this was right here? That 20,000, that is omega, right? Because it's usually omega T. And what did I tell you omega equaled? The frequency. Omega equal 2 pi F. So for this 2 pi F, I just put 20,000 in there. That is my 2 pi F. And then I multiply it times my inductor, 0 0.1 Henry. And when you do that, you should get 2 K ohms at an angle of What's my angle on inductor as always? Negative 90. That's oh, the other 90. one. Positive 90. Positive. There you go. Think of your capacitors. They got like negative signs if you turn it the other way. So they're always at a negative. So then I'm going to gently line that out and I'm going to put 2K ohm at an angle of 90. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find my X of C. I know that's 1 over 2 pi. FC. Well, I already know what 2 pi equals because I gave you omega. So that's 1 over 20,000 times 8,200 picofarads. What's pico? Exponent what? Pico is Component negative 12. Nano is 9. Remember, nano, 9. Pico is negative 12. So I'm going to put 20,000 times 8,200 exponent negative 12 equals, and then I'm going to hit shift reciprocal equals. And when you do that, you should get, you guys go ahead and figure it out, you should get 6.098 K ohms at an angle of what? What are my capacitors at always, always, always? Negative 90. Negative 90. So I'm going to line out my 8200. And I'll put 6.098 K ohms at an angle of negative 90. Next thing I'm going to do is I do what? Make sure I have angles on everything. Oh, I don't have an angle on my resistor. What's my angle on resistors? Always, always, always. Zero. Zero. So I'm gonna put that in there. So now I got an angle on everything. So I'm gonna find my Z total. All I'm gonna do is add them up. When I add them up, I should get 4.270 K ohms at an angle of negative 73.679. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit my before I do anything, I'm going to hit that little arrow key, and I'm going to hit alpha Z and hit execute. That saves my new Z total in my Z button. And then I'm going to do I total. Okay, I'll give you guys a second or two here. So remember, my voltage when I'm finding I total is 4.243 volts at an angle 60. It's not six. I got to use my phaser voltage. So if I'm my I total, I'm just going to say 4.243 at an angle of 60 divided by alpha Z. So it puts a Z in there. And then I'm going to hit equals. And when I do that, 
you should get, you're probably going to get something like 9.93 something or other at exponent negative 4. Well, I don't want to do negative 4. If I move it to the left one and put 0.993, that's negative 3, which would be milli, but I don't really want to do that. I want to move it to the right until I get to 6, which I think is two spaces. You guys need to go. And I should get 993.658. And since it's negative 6, it's microamps at an angle of 133.679. And the reason I went to micro is the more numbers I can put in there, the better. Because if I go to micro, I have six numbers in there now because I'm still going three after the decimal place. If I went to milli, I just have 0.994. Not going to be as accurate. I want to try to be as accurate as I can because when I add up these voltage drops, I want to try to get as close to 4.243 in an angle of 60 as I can. Okay. Then you're just going to go by and find all your voltage drops. VR1, VL1, and VC1. You guys go ahead and figure them out. I'm going to write them on the board, and then you just check and see if you got the same answers that I got. So let's figure out all your voltage drops. And then compare them to what I give you. So that's what I've got for my voltage drops. You see if you get the same thing. And if you can't read one, please let me know and I'll tell you what it says. If you, if you get what I've got, give me a yes so I know. Because then we're going to do another one, but you guys are going to do this one on your own. I'm going to give you guys time to do it, figure it out, and then we'll go over them. Remember your rules. I know you probably didn't get a chance to write them down. Try to remember them. Make sure I'm in phaser. Find X of C and X of L. Make sure everything has an angle. Find C total. Find I total. Find all my voltage drops. If you follow those six rules, you'll be good to go. So we'll get these done, then we'll do parallel circuits on Monday. Because parallel circuits are pretty simple, just like they were in DC. Same rules apply. And we, and we find Z total the same way we found R total in parallel circuit.
Is everybody getting those voltage drops? I'm not hearing any guesses. It's not making me sound good or feel good. <laughs> Are we struggling getting them or we just haven't got there yet? I, I haven't got there yet. Okay. That makes me feel a little better. At least you're not saying you're just not getting them. No, I, yeah, I just haven't got there yet because I um, I was you wanted to go find your Z total, your I total. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I just wrote the answers up there for you guys. That way you have them, and that's good that you're figuring everything out. That way you get used to doing everything. So you yeah, will probably. Yes, you will probably have on your test, you'll probably have, probably have two series circuits. One I'll give you phasor voltage, one I'll give you sinusoidal voltage. You probably have one parallel, maybe two series parallel. You will have a DC series circuit, probably a DC parallel circuit. And we haven't got to it yet, but we will before the end. You'll have one where you have to find the total capacitance in a circuit, which we'll go over. That'll be the last thing we go over before we start reviewing for the test. So my goal is to do parallel on Monday, series parallel on Wednesday, and then the following Monday, if we need to, do some more series parallel. And then by that Wednesday, be doing total capacitance. And then we can be ready to uh, start reviewing for the test. So if you, got, if you guys want to print out practice tests 3A and 3B and start working what we've gone over so far, you can. And yes, Dante, what is your question? For my uh, for my Z total, I got four. I got the four point two seven zero k ohms. But my angle was a negative seventy three point six three seven. Okay, I probably would not take off for that on the test. Because a lot of it depends on, did you get these values for your X of C and your X of L? Or did you put like 6.1K? Um, a lot of it depends on, the, it's going to depend oh, on, the, on the rounding. Yeah, I see what you're seeing. Yeah, if you didn't put 6.098K like I did, if you mm -hmm. put like 6.1K, yeah, your your numbers are going to be a little bit different. Um, just to clarify for Z total, you're adding up R1, L1, and C1, right? <coughs> Correct. But okay, you got, so when you add them up, make sure when you add them, you're always adding all the ohms. Don't add the Henrys and the picofarads. Just go with mm -hmm. the ohms. That's why I want you to line those out. Then you know, hey, I'm not using that anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once you uh, figure X of C and X of L, you line that. Henry's and Pico Farad's out. That way, you know, okay, I'm done using them. The only time you're going to use those is for finding X of C and X of L. Everything else, you're going to use the actual X of C and X of L value. Okay. So if you line them out, it kind of helps you remember, oh, yeah, I'm not using that anymore. Now that I got my ohms, that's what I'm going to use from now on. Um, when Entering the micro amps into the calculator for VR1. If you saved you... your I total, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Well, I did not this time. So ah, I... so, so then it would be, you put it in as 993.658 exponent okay. negative 6. Because micro is negative, negative six, 6. At an angle of 133.679. That's right. Yeah. Exponent. That's why it always helps if you... If you get used to saving everything after each, then you don't have to worry. You can just write the answer down, and then when you go back and punch it in, you don't have to punch all them numbers in any, any, anymore. 
you already have them saved in your calculator. Writing it so down helps with repetition. Well, that too. Yeah. Let's see. How are we looking? Everybody, everybody getting to the voltage drops and getting the same? Getting the same thing. Getting the same voltage <laughs> drops that I got or something pretty close. Your angles might be just a little bit off. Your voltages might be, but just like with DC, as long as you're close, like if you get 1.189 volts at 133.662, an angle 66.662, that's fine. You're close. I, I want you to be close. I'm, I mean, depending on how you round, you may get a little bit different. If you don't use three decimal points and everything, if you're if you're writing it down like this and using these numbers, you're probably going to get different because I save that whole number in my calculator all the time. So I'm using that big long number. I'm not using just this number. I'm using the big, the whole big number I got when I got Z total because I saved Z total in my calculator. Mm. You know, if, if you write them down and then use the numbers you wrote down, you may get a little bit different than what I'm getting because you rounded where I used the whole number that I have. Okay. So that, that comes into a factor as well. So everybody's looking good now. Yep. Getting the numbers I'm getting. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm going to erase this one. I'm going to put another one on the board. And this one I'm going to let you guys do on your own. I still want you to find mm -hmm. Z total, I total, and all the voltage drops. So I'm going to let you do this one on your own. So I'll give you 10 minutes or so to get it done. And then... We'll go over the answers to them all. All right, so here you go. <coughs> so there's your problem. <coughs> and I'll give you all about 10 minutes or so to, to get the answers. Z total, I total, and all the voltage drops. So have fun.
All right, has it been 10 minutes yet? No. I'm just kidding. Take your time. And just in case you guys want to know, your grades are posted in Canvas. I think I'm pretty okay with grades. Now. I hope I can. Doing something wrong. <clears throat>
Going. Good. How do you properly enter C1 into the calculator or XC when you're finding it? You got to, when you're finding it, you got to put your formula in there. What's your formula to find X of C? Uh, 1 over 2 pi FC. So I take 2 pi times my frequency times my capacitance and then I hit equals and then hit shift reciprocal. Ah. So, because everything is over one over everything, right? Mm -hmm. I gotta do my shift reciprocal. Left, left. Nope, all the way left. You go on, there you go. I think I'm doing something right.
How are we doing? Uh, I don't think it got the right answer for XC. Okay. So, what do we get for X of L? Let me uh, tell them what they got. I got, uh, wait. I got 2513.274 for the angle of 90. So, 2. Point five one three k ohms at an angle of nine. That's correct. Well, I got that. Okay, what'd you get for X of C? Nine hundred and seventy. Nope. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Nine hundred and seventy. I was looking at something different. Sorry. Nine hundred and seventy point four five seven. You didn't get that. Ohms, and what's my angle? Negative 90. Negative 90. So you should have put 2 pi times 20 k ohms times 8200 picofarads, which would be 8200 exponent negative 12, then hit equals, and then hit shift reciprocal. 
Oh, I didn't. 457. Five times. 970.457. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're going to go to three decimal places to make this a little more accurate times rather than just saying 970. 20 exponent negative 12. Uh, not 20 exponent negative 12. 20 exponent 3. 8200 exponent negative 12. Unless you're doing X of L. X of L is 20 exponent negative. I just I just typed that in wrong. <coughs> Let me try it again. Two pi. Two pi times twenty exponent three. Three times eighty two hundred exponent negative twelve. Mm -hmm. Then hit equals. Then hit shift reciprocal and equals again. Exponent twelve equals. Nine seven. Yeah. Okay, I got it now. There you go. So now, how do I get my z total? I just add them up after I put what my angle of zero on my resistor, so everything has an angle. So that was step three. Make sure everything has an angle. Step four: find z total. So did anybody get z total? I, I, did, but I didn't even put the right number in there, so. Well, now you should be able to get a veto. Mm -hmm. And remember, once you get Z total, before you do anything else, save it. Hit that little arrow and then alpha Z and execute that saves it in your Z for you. Mm -hmm. How do you properly find, I mean, no, never mind, never mind. Is so once I post this video, you guys should go back and look the video and redo the problem. Mm -hmm. Draw it on a piece, draw the problem on a piece of paper, do everything, and then continue the video so you can make sure you got the right answer. So I got, now I got one point, I mean, not one point, one, eight, three, eight, point three, two. Okay. But I'm going to move my decimal point over three, so I'm going to make it one point eight. Three eight k ohms at an angle of what you get your angle at? Uh, five seven. Five seven point zero four five, or somewhere close to that. So that's my Z yes, tone. That's what I got. And then I'm gonna hit that little arrow key, Alpha Z, execute. That way it saves it in the Z. Okay. Arrow key. Well, I think I did something wrong. Did you not get that for Z total? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Just add all these up. Make sure you put the angles in there. I did. 1K, angle zero. 2.513K, yep. angle 90. 970.457 at an angle of negative 90. And hit equals. No exponent. This no is exponent? Ohms. Yep, this one's just ohms, so there's no exponent. Ah, that's where I went wrong. I put ah, you put exponent three, didn't you? Yes, why is it just ohms? Because when you figured it out, it came out in just ohms. It didn't come out in K ohms. Mm. It just came out at 970.457. That's just ohms. That's right. Why the force I have it, I put... So let me enter all that. So that to get an I total, it's just E total divided by Z total. And we'll get our I total. How do you, how do you, so I, I know how to save it, but how do you pull it up again? Then you just put 120 at an angle of zero, hit your divide key, and then mm -hmm. alpha Z. 
and you should, and then it should say 120 at an angle of zero divided by Z, and then hit equals. I'm still not getting that answer. You're not getting that answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Type it in your calculator, just the way I tell you. Okay. One exponent three at an angle, and then put your angle zero. Zero. Plus. 2.513 exponent 3 angle 90 plus 970.457 angle negative 90. Make sure you're hitting the negative and not your minus. Key. And then hit equals. Oh, I said what I did wrong. I forgot to add the exponent to my 2.5. Ah. There's no exponent three. Now did you get 1.838K on? Yes, then you, you moved the decimal over to the left yep. space. Yep. So who got I total? Anybody? I got it. Uh, I got it. 0 0.06527. You and your zero point, man. Move it to the Lily. 65.277 mm -hmm. milliamps at an angle of, what'd you get your angle at? Negative 57.045. Negative 57.04. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that's that be like when it confuses me because I would have turned it to like four or six. Okay, well I put I put four or five, but if you round it to four or six, that's fine. As long as you're getting if you get four or six and I got four or five, I'm not gonna take off of it. That's okay. pretty close. Mm -hmm. I probably didn't round properly. Mm -hmm. And it's possible sometimes. Sometimes I don't pay attention and I just write down the numbers I see and don't pay attention to the round. So that's my I told. Now yeah, I just I, go back and get all my voltage drops. Using Ohm's law or the voltage divider rule, whichever I prefer. Just so I total is E divided by Z? I total is E total divided by Z total. So for each one, I'm just doing the um, I total times the the ohms at that point. And you can yeah, yes, yep, that's it. So, yeah, Joey, Angel, any of you guys get VR one? VR one, I got. All right. And the calculator is just an exponent of negative three. Outstanding. Oh, I mean, so I put all the voltage drops up there for you guys because I'm going to stop the recording because I don't want to go too long where I can't download it for you guys.
So there's all the voltage drops. I want you guys to figure them out and then look up there and make sure you're getting what I got for my voltage drops. <laughs> 